Welcome to the World United. Welcome to the World United. So welcome to spirituality and science and technology and also spirituality and media. And our first speaker today is Jill C. Lublin. And if I pronounce your name, please just correct me. So Jill is an expert publicity strategist, a consultant, and a four times best-selling author. Wow. She is going to speak to us about the profit of kindness. So welcome, Jill. It's, the stage is yours. Well, thank you so much. And I know Maritza is getting my bio up and so excited to be with all of you today and to help you because what we're going to focus on in particular is all about kindness. Um, yes, I'm a publicity expert. And you may wonder, what does this have to do with kindness? And go ahead back to gallery view, please, uh, Maritza, because what I want to help you with is the fact that kindness ties into everything right? It ties into everything. You know, it's so interesting. Um, when I looked at my books and I went, wow, I've written these business books and now, now we're writing on kindness. How does that work in the world? Well, kindness permeates everything. Kindness will increase all of who you are. And you know, it's interesting. Go ahead to the next, Mar Maritza, because we found out in writing The Profit of Kindness that 15% of our financial success comes from knowledge and skills, while 85% is formed from our ability to connect with others. Well, isn't that interesting? Yes. And, and I think that as we look to see how kindness ties into our world, one of the things, you know, I know people talk about practicing a random act of kindness. My friends, here's what I want. Go ahead next. I want you to practice a conscious act of kindness every single day. Yes, conscious, not random. And, you know, I was saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm most known for my book, Guerrilla Publicity, but here's the thing. When I wrote uh, The Prophet of Kindness, I started looking at companies and how does kindness tie in to their publicity and what they're doing. And then I heard this story, this story about a young man whose grandmother was dying. And it was Tuesday. Uh, she wanted Panera Bread Company's clam chowder. And she, he called up the clam, the uh, New Hampshire, I think it was in New Hampshire uh, in, in the United States, the Panera Bread Company. And he said, listen, I'd love some clam chowder. My grandma's dying and very sick. The woman who answered the phone, probably, you know, minimum wage worker said, you know, um, absolutely, but truthfully, we can't make clam chowder today. It's Tuesday. We make clam chowder on Friday. And he, well, he said, I don't have time till Friday. She's not going to make it. And the woman did the right thing, the kind thing, because sometimes rules have to be thrown out. Right? We all know this as we practice our spirituality that in business there are rules, in life there are boundaries, yes. And sometimes you throw them all out to do the right thing and the kind thing. And so guess what? That Tuesday, that woman made him clam chowder, gave him a tin of cookies, and sent him on his way. Well, look at on the screen. There are over 790,000 shares for this story, right? Plus my book, plus it's all over the world now. Isn't that interesting how kindness um, begets not only the power of what's right, but also it's good for your company. It's good for you. It's good for your business. I found, and I found in writing The Prophet of Kindness that People who practice kindness were, of course, guess what, happier. And that, uh, interestingly enough, they did better financially. And that also um, the people around them were happier. So if you're running a company or inside of a company, plus your customers are happier. That's always a good thing. So, you know, kindness is the basis, the most important part for how we continue. And then I want to let you know, you know, everyone's always concerned with return on investment. And so I came up with rocks, return on kindness, because look at the screen, kindness 
rocks. Yes, kindness <laughs> rocks. So we created return on kindness principles. There are seven of them. And I'll go through them one by one just quickly so you can hear them and know them. Go ahead next because one of them is generosity. You know, giving back, giving to others. Like what is your give back on a consistent basis? If it's in business, great. If it's in personal, great. What is your commitment to give back? Okay, and next we have compassion. Not only compassion for others, but how about compassion for yourself? You know, not only do we need to be kind to others, but we need to be kind to ourselves. Yes, yes. Okay, keep going. Because what we also have is gratitude. Today, I'm grateful for. I have a gratitude practice every morning. First thing, five things I'm grateful for no matter how I feel, no matter what's going on. And at the end of the day, same thing. Five things I'm grateful for. I just speak them out loud. I don't even keep a gratitude journal. For me, that's one more thing to do, but I just like it really simple. So whatever's easy for you, create a gratitude practice. And then be positive. Positivity, uplifting thoughts, right? What is it that you're um, speaking out into the world? Is it positive? Does it give much to others. And then next we have the uh, return on kindness principle of flexibility. Oh yes, have we learned a lot about flexibility in these times? Oh yes, we have, these wild times. And you know, blessed are the flexible for they shall not be broken. This, these times call for incredible flexibility. That means in your life, with your loved ones, with your clients, with your customers, with whoever, You've got and must be flexible. You've got to be flexible. Okay. And next we have patience. Oh, yes. I, oh, yes. Practicing patience is a big thing. You know, right when I was writing this chapter on patience, I called a utility company. Big mistake. I was on hold for an hour. And I remember they came back in and they said, thank you for your patience. And I said, oh, well, <laughs> in my mind, who said I was patient, right? <laughs> I love when people thank me for my patience. Like when you're on an airplane and they're like two hours late, you got a meeting on the other side or you, you've got something you want to be at, right? And they come on and they say, thank you for your patience. And I'm like, not sure. Not sure why you're thanking me, but thank you. <laughs> but patience, of course, is everything. And go ahead next. Because, you know, what we need and thrive is for connection. Yes, connection. And I think, again, now more than ever, we um, are so blessed to be here uh, and to be able to connect on Zoom and to be with each other, right? But with that, my friends, comes the power of, you know, what, what, is, it that, what is it that you need in terms of connection? Go ahead next. Because what we're looking for is every single day practicing this, right? Every single day. Let's bring us back to gallery view. And Janet, if you can maybe pin me would be great. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Because what we're, what we're looking for is um, the opportunity. Can you pin me by chance? What we're looking for is the opportunity to um, create that kind of kindness that gets other people connected to you. Yes? Sorry, Jill, I don't know how to pin you. <laughs> Logistical can lesson. It? Can you try I'm sorry. it? Maritza, maybe can you try it? Um, I just I'm not a host, but you. just pin you're, her. You're good. I just pinned you. you. Could you pin? Uh, not quite yet. I can just you? pinned you. You're set. Oh, you did? Okay, great. Okay, perfect. Because all I see is you on the screen. Thank you. Um, okay, great. Thank you. So uh, the thing about everyday kindness is that what it is is becoming conscious right and we said we're going to skip any more of the slides um because what what the point about kindness is creating that connection creating the seven pathways so that kindness rocks in your life now i i have to tell you something very exciting and actually Maritza, let's go to um i want to show you with the prophet of kindness uh that you know, funny enough, you've got to sometimes find a different way into the media because I am a media expert. And part of what we're always looking to do is how do we spread messages, right? Messages of greatness, messages 
of um, tremendous impact. And with, with the message of the prophet of kindness, what we did was we picked the divided states of America. And that, my friends, is what got us on Fox News and 75 radio uh, interviews, podcasts and counting, articles, Inc. Magazine and Forbes twice. Um, you know, if you look at the screen, actually, that's only a third of some of the media we got. And so God planted a seed in my heart. And one of that was to do kindness circles. And I'll tell you, when COVID hit, that was it. I started <laughs> these Year of Kindness. And Maritza's going to post in the chat, not only the link to the Year of Kindness, but also a way you can schedule with me. Please, let's connect, because connection is one of the rocks of kindness. So she'll put that in the chat as well as how to schedule with me. It'd be a delight to connect with all of you. I want to show you how we're spreading kindness around the globe because now um, the prophet of kindness is in India. On the left side is our book in India with the biggest publisher in India. And on the right side is the copy in Russian. Super excited that um, we are now spreading kindness around the globe. So I invite you to do that with me. Uh, go, let's go ahead back to gallery and, and pinning uh, would be great. Let's come back to gallery. And what we're going to do is just thank you for being here. Um, thank you for the opportunity to serve with all of you and to create that connection with all of you and to remind you about kindness. Because my friends, kindness rocks and your message <laughs> and your message matters. Thank you for having me. Thank you to all who put this on. Appreciate you. Jill, thank you so very much. Boy, I can resonate with a lot of that.